All right. Thanks, Coach. Um, we'll take, we just have, as Dave said before, we have time for just a very few amount of questions. Uh, we're going to start with Brian Howell from the Bowler Daily Camera. Coach, nice to meet you. Uh, we know, uh, seeing the documentaries, the difference you've made in, in Jackson, Mississippi, what was it about the opportunity to come here and try to make a difference in a very different place that, that drew you to Colorado? The Bible says God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And he's always taken me, taken me to unlikely places. You know, usually when you're great, I mean, great at something. I mean, really great at something. I was really great, you know? <laughs> I'm joking. You're going to understand my sense of humor now. <laughs> I kind of wasn't joking, though. I really was. <laughs> Usually, you're a staple of that organization. And I had to think when I was a player, why would I have to play for five different football teams and four different Major League Baseball teams? It's because God took me from place to place and faith to faith and glory to glory to bring unity, to bring solvency, to bring peace, to bring joy, to bring happiness, to bring love to others. And that's the same darn reason I'm here now. Because he always used an unlikely person to do an unlikely thing. So I'm, I'm ready for the task. And I truly am thankful. And I can reiterate it a hundred times. You have no idea. Um, these last few years have been truly a blessing, but we learned a lot about life and a lot about people. Um, I'm not into politics, but I'm into people, and I'm pretty good with people. All right, next question, Pat Graham from the Associated Press. Hey, Coach Brian, I'll kind of echo off that question a little bit. Um, you've made a tremendous impact at the HBCUs. I, I guess how difficult was the decision to leave what you started there? Tremendous, because it wasn't about the X's and O's or the wins and losses. It was about those kids. It was about looking at the faces of those kids, knowing that uh, I'm being ready. God is getting ready to elevate me. I'm sorry. God is getting ready to elevate me. Usually a coach is terminated or elevated. Thank God I'm elevated. But still, the, the journey is not complete. Some of the things that we accomplished there about bringing understanding and notoriety to certain uh, falsities or uh, non-committal things that are done at Power Fives, maybe God is using me to be the catalyst to make you think and to make you just fathom another way to, to make us feel unthreatened when someone of the other ethnicity is approaching, to just make us feel good about today. Maybe God is really using me to open doors at this level. The thing that alarms me the most is just because I'm leaving Jackson, they think that I'm leaving African American. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I can never leave who I am or what I am or how I am or how I go about being that. So it is still my task to look in that locker room and see 65 to 70 percent of African American men trying to help them get to the next level as well as all the others. My calling is for young men, young women, and people of all walks of life, all social climates, and all ethnicities. That's my calling. My calling is not built on a location. It's built on a destination. Now, that was good. You're supposed to clap for that. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. That was good. You give me some of my good stuff. We just, we just getting started. I already went in the bag, baby. Let's go. <laughs> All right, next question is Adam Munster Tiger from 247. Hi, Coach. Welcome to Boulder. I'm just curious. I know you've only been here for about 14 hours. Yeah. Has anything surprised you about Colorado been different than your perception coming out here? Yes, I've been checking the weather every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it is beautiful. It is beautiful outside. And uh, just things that blesses my heart. Like when we landed last night after I spoke to our team and just hearing fans at the airport. And those fans, I think they journeyed over here, and my son and my family, my lady and all us, we, we and the coaches, we walked on the field just to get a feel for it. And my foot was about to burst. It was throbbing like crazy. And my son, just to see him walk around out there, you know, and my daughter, who's, who's going to be a basketball player. She's played basketball for Jackson State. Yes. Yeah. Just to see them meander 
around this beautiful complex and on the field, it just it, it brought tears to my eyes, man. So those type of things, just the, the welcome and the hospitality and the love and the respect and the appreciation. And Rick's wife has done a wonderful job, too. I don't know about Rick. She's outdone Rick. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a little upset. She's, she's talking to my lady about shopping, and that's, I, we, we got to stop that right now. <laughs> this place ain't cheap. I do know that. <laughs> All right, next question is Nikki Edwards from Rivals. Hi, Coach. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Good. Um, how would you define your coaching style, and how can CU fans get a sense of how well, you approach time. the game? I'm 55, baby. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the first question. How would you define your coaching style? My coaching style is prominent, like those boots and those jackets. You see how you took your time and meticulously put that together? <laughs> meticulously? Yes, I am. Um, I dot eyes, cross T's. I don't miss nothing. I'm an early guy. You know, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm in. I'm, I, I'm not gonna tell you what time I get to work because you don't want you waiting on me out here. But <laughs> I, I work my butt off to to make sure what you see on Saturdays are perfected and they're profound and they make a statement. Um, next question. I forgot the next one because I'm old. How can see you fans get? <laughs> How can CU fans get a sense of how you approach the game before you take the field? Before I approach the oh my God, that's good. It's a little different. Um, just me and her to our social media uh, with, with Jackson, you'll understand how we do things. We do things a little different because I want our kids in a relaxed atmosphere and I want them to have fun. But it's hard to have fun when you're not winning. So we're going to create a winning atmosphere. That's number one. We're going to get the kids and the young men in here, as well as the coaches and the staffers in here that are committed to excellence, that are committed to winning, that, that you don't even fathom the word lose, that you, you, everything you do is to dominate and to be successful. Um, I love what I do, and I do what I love. You're going to see that on the wall somewhere. All my sayings, all my quotes, you're going to see that stuff because that's how I live, and that's what I embody. And it's genuine. I don't make this stuff up. I can't. I'm not that smart. I do not make this stuff up. This stuff is in me, and it, it, it just pours out of me when I have the opportunity to, to speak to a, a young person or to try to uplift the young man. I love this, and I cannot wait to put it on display. Next question, Sean Keeler from the Denver Post. Good afternoon, Coach Prime. Um, you mentioned Rick being like a brother from another mother. Mm. Uh, uh, words to that effect. What, what was the first thing he said? You remember that first conversation, what that was like? What made you think? He was trying to feel me out. Yeah, I'm calling that guy back. <laughs> he was trying to, he was trying to feel me out. watching the Cowboy Packer game. He was trying to feel me out. No, it was a phone call. Yeah, that's right. See, see that. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Details, baby. <laughs> It was a phone call, but it was quick. It was expeditious. He, he didn't want to elongate the, the conversation. He just wanted to feel me, to see was there interest, and certainly there was interest. But I was more interested in him than the opportunity because he was going to tell me about the opportunity eventually, but I wanted to know who he was. And I didn't have to do homework and Google or anything like that. It just after several conversations, and he's slick, too. He's slick. God, he's slick. <laughs> Getting ready to go play a darn game, and I, I check my phone, and it's a picture of this beautiful stadium. Just checking on you. Have a good game. Man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, snow is on the field, but it's going to melt within an hour. Send your picture in. <laughs> Just, just, he was very strategic and profound. He, he's, I, I see why you guys been together that long. He's good, isn't he? He's good. Yeah, he's good. You're good, man. You really are. So it was very strategic. <laughs> Next question, Ariel Arsudu from Channel 9. Hi, Coach. Great to meet you. Just talking around the room, the buzz is as electric as it was back at the national championship game. I mean, does that bring you kind of any any worry to live up to that? Do Ju I look like a man that worries about anything? Not at all. Did no. you see the way I walked in here? Did you see the swagger that was with me? <laughs> worry? Baby, I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> yeah, come on, I'm too damn blessed <laughs> to be stressed. I, 
I never been one for peer pressure. I put pressure on peers. I never been one to worry. I make people worry. I, I don't. I don't get down like that. I'm too darn confident. And you've heard me in this quote many times. That's my natural natural odor. I don't even wear cologne. That's confidence I'm, I'm wearing right now. <laughs> I don't worry because I know the resources and the staff that we're afforded here. And I know the work ethic that we have. And I trust. The Bible says that Rod and that staff, they comfort me. This staff is going to comfort the heck out of me. And we're going to be good. We're really going to be good. I do not worry. You need to worry about getting a spot in here the next time we do this, because there's going to be more cameras than this. That's the worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, let's go, baby. I love, <laughs> it. I love it. All right, next question, Eric Christensen from KCNC. So, uh, hey, Coach Prime, how you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. So. Um, Similar to that question, but the fans last night, I was out here following you around and talked to some fans, and their expectations are sky high. What are your expectations for this place? Much higher than them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I've been there. They hadn't been there. Uh, I've been to the mountaintop, and, and they hadn't been there. Um, I know they want to go there, and I want them to go there, but I want us to go there together. So my expectations exceed all. Um, Shoot, we, we had the game handily last night, and I was going off because we were letting them score. We don't – what's our stats, Hart, defense, where we ranked? Number one. Number one against anybody. So we How many points we give up? 131 points. Yeah, so when someone scored – how many did they score last night? 24. Yeah, what, how did that happen, by the way? <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff I get upset with. Like, how did that happen? We've given up 100 some points in 12 games, and they scored 24. I don't understand that stuff like that. But we got the job done. We, we, we got the job done. And I was just really, during that game, just thinking about those kids, just thinking about their faces. That's all. All right, this is the last question. Tyler King, Denver Gazette. I'm having Gazette. a good time, and this is the last question. <laughs> hey, Coach. Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. Nice to meet you. Um, just curious, you mentioned it in your opening statement about, you know, Coach George or Rick George, you know, bringing in multiple black head coaches in a row. How much was, how important was that to you when you were looking at this job that you would be the third consecutive and the first school to ever do that? Not, none whatsoever. They had no bearing on me um, whatsoever. I'm thankful and I'm appreciative that he's that kind of man that he see past the ethnicities. But I was really focused on the man and the opportunity and what we could do. This is a wonderful situation. This city is undarned believable. It really is. It's beautiful. Um, although I've only been to a few places, um, but it's it's beautiful. So just seeing and understanding the expectation of that stadium selling out, and you guys are going to do it because I trust you like that. You guys are going to sell that out. And just to see that and to envision that, it's unbelievable. I, I can't wait. And uh, everything he said, the half had been told. He He... He tried his best to articulate it and describe it as eloquently as he could. And he's a very articulate and eloquent man. But he still didn't do it any justice to what we saw last night and what we're seeing right here. You need to give your darn selves a hand because this is beautiful. This is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful thing. And we need to stay together. We need to stay united. We need to continuously believe. It may not happen as quick as you may desire it to, but it's going to happen. We're going to win. It's, it's going to happen. I'm not going to put a timetable on it, but it's going to happen. I didn't put a timetable on the Jackson, but it happened. I didn't put a timetable on change, but things change. I didn't put a timetable on some of the things that we have accomplished, but we've accomplished things that I had no idea about. Every time we stepped on the field, it seemed like it was a different record being broken. And I had no idea about it. Um, last night we were winning. They came and told me, well, Shador need two more completions for a darn record, a completion record. I said, well, give him a two jet sweeps. Let's get this junk over with so we can come on, man. Let's get this game over with. <laughs> jet sweep is when you pitch the ball to the guy. It's hard to miss him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and it counts as a completion. <laughs> right, son? <laughs> last question. Any other questions? Jake, do you want a question? from DNVR. You're looking good, too, my man. You're looking dapper. Oh, thank you. Okay. 
Hey, Coach Prime, good to meet you. I was just wondering if, uh, since you're in Colorado now, is Rob Jay going to be able to roll with you to the Broncos oh, game? Oh, my God. If I tell Rob Jay that, he's going to – he tried to sneak on the plane, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's quite a few people trying to sneak on the plane. Um, honestly, let me tell you something about the hearts of these men. Um, they suggested that some type of way we involve Jackson State in students or something to – uplift and promote and uh, provide a, a, a mean and a way of greater understanding. I'm trying to put that as pol politely as possible. But that's the character of these men and these people here at this wonderful institution. They don't have to do that. That didn't come with the package. But for them to say, you know what, we need to reach back and help some folks. I love it. I absolutely love it. So when you start telling what transpired today, make sure you tell that. Because that's the character of these wonderful people of this prestigious university. And I love that 100%. Hey, thank you all. I can't wait to see you. I love you. God bless you.